let's say you you can squat and deadlift three, four, five hundred pounds, and you do it always wearing a weight belt, and then you go to pick up a eighty pound couch, and you throw your back out because you can't brace your core yeah. properly. Yeah, because you think it's not you a can. mystery why that happened. Right, you because think you your can. stabilizing pattern is so conditioned to the belt that you go lift something light, and it's the wrong way to stabilize because you don't have uh, the belt on. All right, here's today's giveaway, Matt's Power Lift. You can get that for free, but you got to win. You got to win to get it for free. Here's how you can do that. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. Do all those, and if we like your comment, we'll notify you. You'll get free access to Maps Power Lift. Oh, one more thing. We have another channel on YouTube called Mind Pump Clips. If you want short clips of us saying really cool, smart stuff that you can share with your friends, go sign up to that channel as well. One more thing. We're running a sale all month long. The Shredded Summer Bundle is 50% off. That includes Maps Aesthetic, Maps Hit, Maps Prime, and the Intuitive Nutrition Guide. So all of that together, 50% off. Plus, if you just want to try one Maps program, Maps Hit by itself is 50% off. You can find all of that at mapsfitnessproducts.com, but you got to use the code JUNE50 for that discount. All right, here comes the show. Lifting weight belts, do they improve uh, safety? They make it safer? Yes and no. In some cases they do. In other cases, they make things much more dangerous. Oh, you didn't want to be more controversial than that? Well, I think this is a good thought you are going to say something more alarmist. Yeah, well, he, I, you know why I want to talk about this? Because um, it is true that you can lift more weight with a weight belt, so that makes the heavier weight safer. But here's the other side. When you train with a weight belt often, it teaches your core to activate in a way to where it's more stable with a belt on and you actually lose stability or lose the ability to stabilize without the belt on. I feel on. like we should training have, dependency. Yeah, I was gonna say we yeah. should have let Justin we should have let Justin open this one because he would have said something like yeah. if you use a weight belt, you're a wimp. You're yeah. doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just offend hella people. Right? Yeah, no, I mean, obviously for competitors and whatnot, but the, again, for your average person, I could make an argument that it's like, I, I wouldn't recommend it. No, I, I actually, I've only had, I mean, my whole training career, two clients ever used weight belts and they were the ones that were really interested in progressing weight and they were getting real strong. And I'd explain, you know, the potential risks and benefits. But what happens with a weight belt is, and I remember there was these old studies that came out. I say old now, they're probably 10 years old that came out that said, Hey, your core activates as much or more with the weight belt than without. Therefore, weight belts don't decrease core stability. It's like, okay, that's not the full picture. But yes, it's active, but it's active differently. When you wear a weight belt, your core pushes out against the weight belt and the belt creates stability. When you don't wear a weight belt, it braces itself and it's not pushing out against something. So if you try to brace your yeah. core like you have a belt on when you don't, yeah. not a good idea. So you're no. lifting something heavy in real life and you're trying to use that same technique and, and you're bracing outward, you're going to put yourself in a vulnerable position. Totally. Vulnerable. Well, and that's why this is so important. Yes. It's that exact reason right there. You get really strong. Let's say you you can squat and deadlift three, four, five hundred 500 pounds and you do it always wearing a weight belt and then you go to pick up a 80-pound couch and you throw your back out because you can't brace your core properly. Yeah, yeah because you think it's not you a can. mystery why that happened. Right, you because think your you stabilizing can. pattern is so conditioned to the belt that you go lift something light, and it's the wrong way to stabilize because you don't have uh, the belt on. So um, I almost never use them with clients. Like, why? Why would I? There's no real purpose. Now, if I'm training somebody who's going to compete with the belt, or really we're pushing the weight, and we're you know it's okay. We understand the, the challenges, but also even look, I wear a belt. Because I was taught to wear a belt. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing it for so long that it's, uh, I don't, this is my own personal thing. I don't want to take the time, which will probably take me two or three years to get to the kind of strength that I can use my belt by training a new recruitment pattern. So I just, whatever. However, if I deadlift, it's really my top sets that I wear the belt. I don't put the belt on until I get past, until I get past 400 pounds. Up until then, I usually keep the belt off because I don't want to always wear the belt. And you see people in the gym mm -hmm. who will wear it when they do curls and tricep press downs and, ex and it's like, oh man, you are conditioning yourself to stabilize in a way that's not a good idea. So I know this was like popular in the eighties. I think it's sort of made a resurgence, but like wearing the belt constantly sort of, there's this idea that it's like slimming the boxy waist, right? In the oh. bodybuilding community. Yeah. Is that still a thing? I think that's part of it. I also think it's kind of a fashion statement. Right. I think it's become like a uh, part of your um, attire. Yeah. Your attire as a bodybuilder, right? Like 
you you come in with your your duffel bag, your belt is over your shoulder, your shaker cup is in your right hand. Remember when you did that video game TikTok yeah, thing? Yeah. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's totally that. You know, it's wearing, your uniform. You're wearing your atomics. Yeah, it's a, it's it's become the it's become kind of the bodybuilding uniform, yeah. and you I want just one that says "Gym Heroes," <laughs> and you and you so you wear. I mean, you never use it. I rarely use it, and you still rarely use it, but use it a little bit more. I use probably. it the most. I would yeah, say. you it's, you definitely use. I it use the it most. for heavy uh, squats, deadlifts, and if I go heavy on an overhead press. But I would say you and I use it the same way. You just use it, you lift heavier than I do more often. I don't mm -hmm. lift that. You lift a lot. You tend to push the the weight a lot more than I do these days. Like right. I used to when I was competing and I was pushing weight a lot more. I tended to do exactly what you do, which is I always had my I, I work up towards getting closer to my max and yep. when i when i started to approach those top sets you know last yeah. last two sets of a, a squat or a deadlift i might put my belt on if it is a day when i'm trying to push those limits because there's other times where i'm lifting heavy and i won't use a belt either it just it have to be a day when i'm trying to push with yep. my max close to my max by the way those bodybuilding weight belts are terrible um the stabilization from a belt a lot of people don't think it's from the back of the belt it's not it comes from the front of the belt that's where the core pushes out so those bodybuilding belts with the skinny front, <laughs> skinny front, and like the a wide huge, back, yeah, wide back. You're not the the. They need to be thick all the way around if you're going to use it for that particular purpose. I've always wondered about that. Yeah, because yeah, I tried one of those on. It's like, oh, this doesn't feel good at all. It's no, weird. and every once in a while, you actually catch somebody who knows that, and they'll actually wear it reverse. Like, yeah, reverse. That's how I know like huh. somebody knows their shit because they'll be wearing. They, they, you, everyone else, think it's backwards. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, that idiot over there is wearing his weight belt backwards, but he's got one of those skinny bodybuilder belts where it's skinny in the front and then it's wide in the back and he actually flips it around. Yeah. Ideally, you get, a, you get a powerlifting one that's, you know, all thick yeah. kind of all the way around. But as far as the waist thing is concerned, you know, you got to understand when you're talking about pro bodybuilders who they have a level of muscle and size in their body that nobody, m most people will never achieve even with all the drugs in the world and whatever. You'll just never get to that point. Their muscles build so much, and they're trying to develop a physique that's perfect for bodybuilding standards, which is not what most people would consider looking good in real life. Yeah. That wearing something to brace your core causes the core muscles to atrophy, or at the very least, not build. So I can see why they would say it helps prevent my waist from growing. Because if you're a 280-pound bodybuilder and yeah. everything is hyper anabolic on your body, you and you want to shape your body the way you want, and you're at that extreme level then and you don't care about your necessarily performance or health, then obviously, because you're 280 pounds, you're, you're going to wear things that atrophy certain right. parts of your body, like a squeam, which is an even yeah. extreme it's example. promoting a shape that uh, it's yes. not necessarily- It's weird function. though that it got popular. It's like, uh, and I know I've, I, we've picked on him a couple of times, but he just, to me, he fits this, this physique so perfect. Like Jeremy Bundia, who was like a men's physique champion for several years, he had that look because he wore it all the time. And I just, I didn't think it looked good. His obliques were like straight. Yeah. It just, you had no muscle definition there because he wore that all the time. And yeah, it might've made his waist, a, you know, a, a fraction of, you know, a quarter of an inch smaller or whatever. But I don't know, to, to somebody that understands the body and stuff like that, I think that like a defined obliques, it's not like, it's not like obliques grow like this, right? Like you just get this, like, this is how the muscle wraps <laughs> around no. the body. Like it doesn't, it would, it would create this kind of, look, which would only enhance the V, which would only enhance the taper look. Like, so look, I I've always thought it was really funny that, and I don't know where it came from, where if it was a judge that told a competitor that decided to try and do that or how it became yeah, popular. Some genetic anomaly had a really like small waist yeah. and then that became the next standard. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But I don't know, man. I, I would all day long trade a quarter of inch on my waist for developed obliques. I don't care if I lose a quarter of an inch on my, and that's a lot, by the way, to develop your obliques to the point where you actually grow your waist by a quarter of an inch is rare. Okay. Cause they don't grow. Like you said, they don't grow out necessarily yeah. this way. You have to really build your obliques. Dude, to director spiny and obliques, dude, that's like what looks strong to me. Oh yeah. Well, Cause you're, you're an athlete like, guy. Dude, that's, this guy, you're an lift. athlete guy. That's why those are very important muscles. For oh my God. An athletic physique. Absolutely. Look, yeah, for sure. You ever look at, um, the sculpture of uh, Hercules, uh, ancient, like old sculpture yeah. of Hercules yeah, yeah. or, or ancient, um, Greek uh, sculpture. Yeah. They all have boxy hips. They have, yeah. they have well-developed obliques because in those days they understood how muscle looked for function. And they noticed that athletes and gladiators and whatever that could swing a sword and move, they got really well-developed, uh, hips and well-developed oblique muscles. So that's what they put on the statues. And in real life, yeah, it looks awesome. In real life, when you see someone with their shirt off, if it's if their waist is a half an inch smaller, but they have no developed obliques, or a half an inch bigger but well developed obliques, 
Forget bodybuilding stages. In real life, it looks more impressive. Yeah, that's why I think it's thing. weird that it got the, that it got popular in in the space. Like I, I never personally heard a judge say that. Mm -hmm. I never heard a judge go like, "Oh, if your waist was smaller, you know that you would have you would have placed higher or whatever like that." So I just think, I think it's what ends up happening is I think that like for, for example, our friend uh, Craig Caperso has a very boxy physique. It's yeah. also what made him a beast, man. I mean, the dude yeah. is an athletic monster. Yeah, yeah he and, looks sick. Yeah, of that, yeah. right. Yeah. But it, and it, when you put him next to someone like me who's tall and lean and has a very tiny waist, I look mm. like I have this more pronounced feet taper. So I think it's just people that are built that way, yeah. looking at people that are built kind of like me, thinking that, oh, that's the way to achieve that when it has nothing to do have with the Have you guys muscle. ever seen, mm. uh, there was a bodybuilder from the 80s. Uh, I think it's Doug. Maybe you can look him up. I think his last name was Buchanan. Uh, look up small body, small waist bodybuilding Buchanan. Um, and he had, and it was genetics, obviously. He had a genetically- a lot of bees in there. I know. He had a genetically small, like narrow, but- Crazy small waist, and that's genetics. You ain't gonna develop. Oh, that. when I when I vacuumed in, I could almost get my. Yeah, you got. Yeah, yeah. When I vacuum, when I was lean for a show, yeah. and then vacuumed all the way in, I could almost get my fingers to touch your own waist. That's yeah. Wow. That's how, well, how it's narrow my waist. You had your shoulders all develop like that. It was yeah. Like this, like, but I mean, it, and it here's the thing more, though: it also you up by your waist like this. <laughs> great, great for getting on, great for getting on stage and prancing around, but yeah. horrible for being a really strong lifter. Look how small Definitely. this guy's waist was. You could yeah, see, yeah. In, uh, yeah oh, he, wow. he was known for. I mean, but that's genetics. You ain't gonna get. You ain't gonna develop that. Yeah, and that's what I mean. I think so. I think people. I think what happened was you had the, the the bodybuilding community would see this and then you would be somebody who had like this like wider hips mm -hmm. and you go like oh i need to yeah. shrink my waist and so i'm going to do this stupid it's trend. Gotta be the comparison thing right like yeah. Yeah. and also too is wasn't there a period where there was like this distended kind of gut that was happening oh, that because of growth happens. hormone and all that that like, still happens yeah yeah that still happens from uh they think it's from combination of the drugs like insulin and, or and what well, uh, insulin growth hormone and they also think believe it or not because well, growth hormone makes everything grow your well, forehead yeah. grows your organs grow and over time you, you take enough at the bodybuilder doses of that growth hormone you got to think all those intestines and all you your organs are all Bonds? growing you ever look at a picture yeah. of Barry Bonds' yeah, his head yeah, yeah. his head when he started baseball yeah. and when he left no I'd love to see the comparison though right here yeah. and right here oh bro <laughs> his his head before and after it's like I don't know you could build your skull. <laughs> that's what he did. You know, yeah. their teeth will space out. Okay, okay so now, Weird. okay, pre pretend we have a we have a situation where we're 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 training someone. They're yeah. relatively new in the space or into lifting. And where is a scenario where you would actually even allow your client or encourage your client to potentially use a belt? And where would you for sure tell them no? Like, what's that look like? Um, I would use. So I used it so rarely, but the times I <coughs> Doug was a client, for example, I used the belt at times, and it was because he started to get really strong, and we had a lot of fun pushing the weight. And so I said, "Do you want to use a belt? We could lift more weight. We'll start to push your goal." His goal was to go. I think your goal was double body weight at one point, and then <clears throat> two and a half times body weight. Yeah. Oh, There's Doug, you used a belt. I did. Oh, I've yeah. never seen a belt on you. Oh, I never wear them now. He doesn't. But no. at that time, yeah. the, his goal was to deadlift, I it was a 400 pounds. 405 was 405. my goal. And he hit it. Yeah. He did hit it match it. your purse? Yeah. <laughs> my purse? <laughs> his belt. <laughs> oh, my belt? Yeah. <laughs> it was a, a Gucci. <laughs> a leopard print. Gucci belt. <laughs> I'm giving Doug shit. But I mean, he pulled 405 at 150 pounds uh, body weight. Yeah, so that's legit. Yeah. Significant. But I yeah. mean, the goal was Gym to do that. strength. And I had one other client that I would do that with. But yeah, I, I think now, knowing what I know now, uh, I actually wouldn't. The only person I would is if we had the desire to get into powerlifting. Yeah, solely if you if totally you rational. if you came to me and you said I have a desire to get into powerlifting, and in your in in the meets that you work at or that you decide to lift in, uh, allow belts or straps or any of those tools yeah, any of the tools that competitive setting where yeah. they require that because you're even strongman training you know on some degree that's yeah. right that, that'd be you have to learn example. how to use the tool right also yeah. using a belt you don't just put it on and all of a sudden you feel way stronger there's actually a skill to use yeah. no belt. some people actually feel a decline if you've never lifted with a belt you've been lifting for 10 years D justin doesn't look, i can tell he feels uncomfortable i've seen him wear a belt once or twice yeah with us. tried sometimes he prefers to take it off yeah just because yeah he never work for me yeah you have to develop the skill of and the practice of it so yeah. no yeah. what you said is that's the right answer 100 yeah. percent. but you know like i said doug was like really pushing it and Obviously, at that time, we were doing Max Fanabolic together, and he's like, I really want to be able to pull, you know, two and a half times my body weight. And so we said, all right, let's let's use a belt, and let's uh, see what happens. But now, he never uses one because he doesn't care. Yeah, I think the the myth that, and why it's still popular, even though, like, obviously, we know we've addressed the bodybuilding thing, but why 
normal people gravitate is they they, they have this idea of like, oh, if I'm going to start getting strong and lifting heavy weight, I want to use a belt to protect my back. No. Mm -hmm. I, that's the, I think that's the thought process on yeah. a what leads. think that. Yeah, what leads a novice lifter who is is getting stronger to go use a belt is the thought process of, oh, I'm going to start lifting heavier weight. Uh, a belt is going to help support my back. So in case it gets a little risky, I have that support. Same reason why you see sometimes construction workers mm -hmm. uh, or people at Home Depot mm -hmm. and they're wearing the construction belt where it's, yeah. it's actually a weight belt, but with straps, straps over the shoulders. Over the shore, yeah. And what they don't realize is they're, they're actually atrophying those core muscles and teaching their body to rely on that device. <laughs> so although it might feel more stable at first, over time, it actually well, and not a good too. Idea. I mean, in that situation, a lot of times, like uh, the they've gained weight. You know, they already are having like back issues at home because they're you know maybe more sedentary. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, now they're in a uh, an environment like that where they have to like lift <coughs> constantly. And so you know, the thought is, well, let me just like protect myself with that instead of like training their core to get stronger to be able to handle. Yeah, it. totally. Anyway, I wanted to bring up a cool article. I thought about Adam immediately. <laughs> Uh, exactly. But I'm not going to tell you, I'm going to use a scientific term and I'll tell you what their names <laughs> oh, are. God. So scientists were able to revive uh, tardigrades, uh, tardigrades in, they were frozen in permafrost. In space. So they were frozen in permafrost for 2,400 years. So literally, oh, sorry, 24,000 years, my bad. What? So 24,000 years, tardigrades, these tardigrades were frozen in Siberian permafrost. Yeah. They took them out. And they were able to be resurrected, come back alive. You want to know what the, what else they're called? You love this animal. We brought them up before. They were on the moon at one point. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Water bears. Water yeah. bears. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, because we left traces of them on the moon. Yeah. For some reason, these little these little microscopic animals just don't <laughs> die. What do they do? They do look like little worm What bears. are they in charge of? I... <laughs> I don't know what they run. Yeah, I have no idea. They, they gotta have a purpose, don't they? They do anything, Doug? I sit, don't know. Or are they just here. there? Eat like oh microscopic. Uh, what, what is it? Like, yeah, like look, a mold you know what something? their their name? So they're called water bears, and they're also called uh, moss piglets. Moss piglets. Yeah. Moss piglets. <laughs> they look like it. Right? They eat moss. So yeah. what do they do? What does it say here? Yeah. Okay. They're nature's pioneers colonizing new, potentially harsh environments, providing food for larger creatures that follow. Oh, so they're the first kind of food. <laughs> well, they're first, uh, the first responders of yeah. So, do so they can animals? live in extremes. So basically, they, space. they can hibernate then in a sense of reanimate. Yeah. Dude, space. Yeah. You, can put, you can put them in, and freeze them. You can put them in hot temperatures. Now, you said we those? found them in the moon. No, we we didn't find them on the moon. That would have been life on another planet. Yeah, we accidentally spilled some on the moon. <laughs> I think we brought them yeah, up yeah. there. We accidentally like contaminated. Like yeah. yeah. So how did we figure that out? Because we brought them up there. Oh, like we like in, in a jar. You we literally bought these things. No, in no, like no. Little, they were like I don't on think it, the ship. I think. Yeah, I don't think they brought them in a jar. I don't know how they brought them, but I know that we dropped them <laughs> on the moon. This sounds like a real fishy story to me. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. I'm assuming these things are so tiny we can't see them to the naked eye. I believe so. Microscopic. Yeah, of course. Yeah, microscopic. So you we get to the moon. Yeah. We drop we accidentally drop some of them. Okay, let's back up here. How do we how do we we where, do we decide hey, let's pick up some of those those water bears and let's go to the moon. No, it wasn't a decision. Or, I think it was just Or they, they carry we clean they we carry clean them on us. No, 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 no. Things properly no, no, I think we took them on purpose. We no, yeah. like it, was we, a, it looks like an Israeli mission, and it mm. crash landed on the moon in 2019. No, we took them on purpose because water we bears deliberately did that? water bears are are great organisms to to take to harsh environments to study because they don't mm, die very I easily. See. Okay, but they they crash landed on the moon, and because these things don't freaking die theoretically, yeah. Who knows what the, you know, 50,000 years, what could happen with these? Well, because isn't there another organism that's like, you know, survives in super harsh conditions? It's like, um, you know, in the seafloor where there's these columns that come up from like. Um, oh, they're like the tubes or whatever? Yeah, like tubes. <coughs> I don't know if they're like some kind of polyp or like, yeah, they're, they're organisms that live in like like the most acidic. Yes, like, I know what you're talking about. Harsh. Aren't jellyfish like that too, or no? No, jellyfish are weird though, man. They live for they live forever though. I think jellyfish. I think theoretically, a, gel, a certain types of jellyfish could live forever. But that's why the, they this don't die is, of age. It's silly. Old like age. we've already discovered, there's life on other planets. It's just like it's it's lame life. 
Well, now we haven't discovered life. What life did we find on other planets? In Mars and bacteria. We found evidence that there may be life, but we haven't found life yet. That would be the biggest news of all time. Dude, they found, uh, I, okay. Evidence like, of it. Yeah, evidence of it. That but, like there I might mean, have been. It's, it's. To me, it's it, that that's ridiculous because all it needs is is a comet to smash into and and spread it spread some kind of bacteria or some kind of like or like water microscopic bears? organism. Yeah, water bear, whatever. And there it is. Uh, uh, it's like, <laughs> speaking of that, so remember a long time ago. <laughs> I can't wait for this transition. There was a uh, <laughs> there. They called it the cigar like comet. Yes, you remember that? Yeah. Okay, so like some people and, and then they started UFO. to speculate that it was like a UFO and yeah. they. So uh, apparently there's like pictures of, from Google Earth of like uh, a crashed vessel or whatever it was. And it looked like it was that cigar um, shaped object that had actually landed and then, and then skidded across. And then, and then there's like, it fits that perfect like shape and dimension of what we saw, uh, you know, in the sky. So they never reported it. They, yeah. So it's in Antarctica somewhere. Remotely. Of course. Yeah. So and Arca has everything, dude. With the ancient, want, with yeah. the uh, with the hidden Nazi super base. Yes, <laughs> is that that's, where that's supposed that's to be at? There's a theory that's, that there's a that's where that, a Nazi that's super where that base exists. underground. Um, in I can't believe you guys had the space in those brains for this type of information. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's just way more such interesting a, such than what is going on in in politics and government. You guys could have built, built like, have all you guys that could have built like a different department for this business. Listen, with the, that's wasted is, space. Listen, I have no idea. It's way more interesting. I don't know Water the history. Knowledge. I don't know the history of every tennis shoe ever invented. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Yes, you do. <laughs> You're always telling me like the history of your sh of shoes. <laughs> This is the yeah, yeah. this is the seventh generation. Actually, the third the third yeah. generation. The creator, his mom died, so he was inspired by like, what the fuck. This How do you designer know? took it on and is now selling it for uh, like three times yeah, the like, price of what it normally was, just by adding these little. Uh, all right, all right, paintings all right, all right. On it. get the point. You're <laughs> into what you're into. Yeah, that's you know? fair. Anyway, it's funny that you guys found each other. I'm so happy for you. Hey, we all found <laughs> so, each so we all found each other, didn't we? Dude, we hug sometimes out of the podcast. Like, dude, I, like, this happened. Uh, that's true. Yeah. I mean, I do like there's a part of me that likes hearing about it. I mean, I, I'm curious. Like, and I, well, you, I, you know nothing's gonna catch you by surprise with Justin. You're, that is true, actually. No, I if it, some weird shit happens. Yeah, someone like, brings me a conspiracy theory, I'm like, oh yeah, the guys talked about that yeah, time, if, if the news comes up and they're like, you know, pig human yeah. crossbreeds taking yeah. over the earth. Like, like, I knew like it. Bill Gates is now in the business of manipulating the weather. Well, oh, you heard oh, it that's, first. Hey, that's the new one, actually. I just yeah. saw that. I just yeah. saw the weather fucking one. Just, really? Just, yeah. Yeah. Is it harp still, or is it something uh, else? Something else, like yeah. So moving his attention from acquiring Isn't all it? the farmland now to like, yeah. I mean, he's such a humanitarian. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, I mean, he is. Look, uh, I'm on paper, the guy's an incredible philanthropist. He's the biggest. A lot of controversy. He's the biggest. Big one. By yeah. far. Yeah. By far. By big far. One. A lot of controversy though around him. L yeah, a little bit. I listen. I listened to his uh, his wife Melinda's interview with. Um, uh, David Letterman. I've been mean, going down the rabbit hole. That if you guys haven't watched all his stuff, it's I so only watched his relationship with Epstein. Ah, I only back. watched the one with yeah. Ryan Reynolds because Jessica was with me. So which one do you think she picked? Yeah. Ryan Reynolds. That one actually was really funny. <laughs> yeah. I watched that one. We too. need to watch this one, Sal. I'm like, oh, I wonder why. But I, yeah, I think it. I think it, the, your back to your weather talk, your tinfoil hat stuff. Uh, yeah. I think China. I think that article I read said that China is already doing this. Yeah, they do cloud mm -hmm. seeding. That's been yeah, around for a long seeding. time. Now. So now they have like drone technology. I guess yes. where they like. We read yeah, the they same have some article. kind of electrical like impulse, and they yes. they stimulate it somehow that way. It tickles the clouds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Makes them. <laughs> 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 it sounds so made up. That's hey, the cloud seeding. Uh, you not picture that? That's just like that though. Oh, it's a real thing. It's science. Yeah, and that <laughs> noise <laughs> happens immediately after it. <laughs> I, hey, they've been. We've been. We've known we could seed clouds for a long time. The problem is we can't predict if it's going to work or not, or we're going to cause some flooding somewhere else. Yeah, but you know, China, they uh, they're like, get the water down. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, let's just go for it. <laughs> I you don't know. know. Have like, you guys seen the plan? Speaking of Tim, have you seen how that like there's plan like speculation or talks about how we could potentially spray certain things into the air to help lower the temperature because of climate change. I'm like, this was the Matrix, dude. That's what they did to the freaking machines. It's yeah. dark in the skies. Can we Don't learn from movies? Maybe. Movies teach us a lot. It's yeah. just weird to me to think to spray some chemical in the air to try and change the temperature and not think that that might have some sort of I, side effect. I, <laughs> we, oh, we sprayed too much. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> All the plants yeah, are dying yeah, now. Yeah. Anyway. We made it worse. Speaking of plants, uh, just read a study on THC. So did you guys know that THC reliably negatively alters your vision? 
Negatively. Negatively. Now, why would they prescribe it for glaucoma? THC? Glaucoma is totally different. So glaucoma is internal pressure in the eyeball, and it does alleviate that. But in this particular study, so here's what they found in the study. Gave people THC, had them do vision tests, their depth perception. <laughs> it's because they're high as fuck. That's yeah, well, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's temporary. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Oh, you thought it was over time. Oh, yeah. It's no, not, no, temporary. Oh, temporary. Oh, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, well, I'm hella high. Yeah. <laughs> this is... I like how Adam's looking over there talking to me. No, my vision's fine. <laughs> no, so uh, so it's temporary. But when the study, a majority of people, while under the influence, said, no, my vision's totally fine. And when they tested them, said, no, 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 your depth perception, your ability to decipher between <laughs> yeah. objects, your ability to, to see things clearly is severely- You think you're doing good and you're not. Well, so this is good. This is good because there's this debate as to whether or not THC should be regulated like alcohol when it comes to driving. Because in mm. in some cases it doesn't impair your um, ability to react and whatever like alcohol does. Okay, it still does, but not like alcohol. However, it does impair your vision, so that's part of the case. How do you for, feel about that? Do you think so? Mm. Oh, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, totally. I think I definitely don't think it's like alcohol. I would much, I would feel much safer driving in a car with someone who's stoned than someone who's drunk. But it definitely doesn't make you a better driver, no. it, or it, it definitely has a negative effect. Yeah. You know. So, yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I've, why I've, is that so quiet? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the. I mean, I, I don't. I don't so it know. depends on what you practice. <laughs> Heaven forbid I say that on this show. I'm going to be no. crucified for something like that. No, I just, uh, well, I don't know if I'm a big fan of regulation. Plus, I don't know if what, how they they will regulate That's it. That's like the what, challenge. What, and what alternative? Because it stays in your system. Yeah, it so stays long. in your system so long. So what's going to happen now? Like, if I can't drive, I smoked weed freaking last yeah, night. And there's levels day. too, right? Like, totally. In terms of like somebody that's like super high, you don't want somebody. Su I mean, they'll probably drive two miles an hour, and it'll be obvious. But you know, at that point, it's like everybody reacts to it differently. So that's too. my. That, that's why I was bringing that up. My experience of someone being really high and driving, it, and I know you say you're you're not. You know, it's, it can't be safe because you're somewhat impaired. But I mean, you typically drive over. You're overly, more paranoid. You're yeah, you're paranoid, so you're overly cautious. They've done studies on that. So alcohol uh, has the, has this effect on you, of which I think is not. I think it's obvious to everybody in here. It makes you overestimate your ability. That's why you know guys will drink and they yeah. go hit on the girl or whatever. Right. Like yeah, oh, yeah. she's totally like me. Marijuana has the opposite effect. Where you underestimate your ability. It's all introspective. Like, yes. Uh, so I don't know if I could drive right now, or maybe I shouldn't go talk yeah. to that. So they say that that's one of the bigger um, differences between the two is that when you're drunk, you think, oh, I'm all cool. You oftentimes, uh, you know, theory is if someone's really stoned, that they're going to be like, no, I, I probably shouldn't. You know, I'm can't I'm, you I'm like impaired. taper the effects though with uh, CBD in combination with the THC? CBD um, helps with the paranoia and it also reduces this, the uh, memory effects. So the short term memory gets affected with chronic, but not sight. <coughs> no, what's, what's yeah, considered chronic? Yeah. What's considered chronic? Chronic use, yeah, yeah. Ooh, that's a good question. I think it's more than once. And is a it, month. is it is it mo oh once more, more than a once month, once a month? Sorry, more is, than once a week, if I'm not mistaken. Is considered chronic use. I think so. And is it dose dependent? Like, I mean, because there's a big I'm difference sure. between somebody who's who's taking a couple hits versus somebody who's like getting ripped. Yeah, I'm sure there time, is. Right? I'm sure there is a difference. Mm. But um, but yeah, the, tr the challenge is testing the levels in someone's system because it's a fat soluble cannabinoids are fat soluble. They stay in your system for so long. So you can't necessarily test someone and see how impaired they are like you can with alcohol. They have yet to come up with that. But they, we used to, look at before breathalyzers existed, do you know how they tested you for alcohol? They had a, a field sobriety test. Oh, they still yeah. do that, no? They can't. They do still, right? They're doing combo sometimes, yeah. Yeah, so I think that's what they should do. Like, oh, I think you're too stoned. Well, let's see if you can walk in a straight line. And See, I like that. Yeah. yeah. I, f I feel like that. I think see if I you can refrain from eating this cupcake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I dare you. <laughs> that might be the funniest <laughs> shit you've seen in a long time. <laughs> Get this guy in the back, of the, back of the car. Oh, God. I, just, yeah. I, I, got, I, the, a, I got the visual on that. Yeah. Sure. I have a few tests for you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here's the, irresistible, yeah. here's the first one. Do you think the birds, or, are, do you or, think the yeah. birds are listening to us? Yeah. <laughs> or tell them tell like a really funny joke and try not to laugh, like belly laugh from it. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Here's second yeah. question. Yeah. Are they spying yeah. on us? Watch oh. SpongeBob for five minutes. Yeah, yeah. Don't come back. SpongeBob. Yeah. Anyway. You know, speaking, hey, speaking of marijuana products and stuff like that, I'm just thinking about when uh, Doug and I went to Utah. <clears throat> we uh, we both were having a hard time sleeping there; couldn't get the temperature right in the in the house or whatever. And I go mellow direction, and you go. You are you sleep or the regular spectrum? What are you using? Sleep. Oh, so you so using, using sleep. Ned sleep, mm -hmm. yeah, which is strong. 
That it, makes it, me, it works I so good. I haven't used that in a while. Yeah. That will put me <clears throat> to sleep every single time. Mellow Me- is like that for me. Really? Mellow is like clockwork. It, it, I mean, that thing it is- It chills me out. Yeah. Of all of all our products, I use that the most most consistent. You do one packet every night? Mm-hmm. Okay. Have yeah. you tried two? I haven't tried two. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I haven't tried. But because when, I, when we met with um, Dr. Cabral- cool. My magnesium was so low that I think he has. So I think one of my supplements I take in the middle of the day yeah. has magnesium yep. in it. And then again, so so I am taking a higher dose now than what I was before, mm-hmm. which I can't tell you if I've connected yet a difference in my sleep. I think I was so low before that introducing mellow was such a game changer for mm-hmm. me that like it's now become a staple if I want to get a good night's rest. You know, it's estimated yeah. that a majority of people, I think <laughs> upwards of 60% of people are somewhat magnesium deficient. And the the symptoms of magnesium deficiency, mild deficiency are increased anxiety, nervousness, insomnia, uh, muscle contractions aren't some, so good. So you might feel a little shaky or like you're not as strong. So, and you, the beauty of something like Mellow is there's no cannabinoids in it, right? So they have, Ned has a lot of hemp products, hemp oil products, legal in all 50 states, right? But uh, Mellow, no <coughs> cannabinoids. If you're deficient in magnesium, you'll notice if you take it. Like you'll take it and you'll be like, oh, I can well, tell. Well, and, and I'll tell you, um, I didn't have any of those symptoms you just listed. So I rec- if you're so like I recommended someone if you're listening to at least try. Like that's cuz it was such a big deal for well, me. Well, yours was sleep though. You I had know, stuff with sleep, right? Yeah, but I didn't have like insomnia, you no. know, or I didn't think I just and I would attribute my bad my occasional bad sleep to just like my brain going or whatever like that. Like so I didn't I, I wasn't like a chronic bad sleeper. Okay. So I didn't have any of these like glaring symptoms that made me go, oh, I need to try. Honestly, I only tried Mellow because we were sponsored by their product. And it's like, oh, we try almost everything that any of our partners have just to see. And it was so shocking to me how great my sleep was that I was like, no way it was from that. Mm -hmm. And then I took it again. It was like, again, it was like, and then you know me, like I'm not, you're the one who's quick to like right away. Like, oh my God, it's amazing. I'm more like (laughs) skeptical, like maybe it was something else, but after consistently doing it, I mean, it is every time I take it, it just helps me sleep on a whole other level. It's become one of the more popular products that they have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and like you said, I think 60% 60 of people are deficient in it. And that's Mm -hmm. all it is. Is I don't think there's anything. I mean, of course they have one of the best You know, speaking of deficient, Deficiencies. Uh, now that we've had COVID for a while and it's been around and they're studying it, I mean, they're really connecting uh, vitamin D deficiency and glutathione, mm-hmm. low glutathione levels. I've brought this up before, yeah. but they're now connecting those two things to severe COVID. Like, like most of the time, if you have severe symptoms, you're low in one or both of those things. So just you know, did you hear that they're thing. they're starting to try and debunk the long COVID? I oh, saw that article. So what did that article say? That it doesn't exist? Yeah, just saying that the more and more that there, 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 there's something else that is correlated with the people that claim they have long COVID symptoms that all have in common. That's not related to actually COVID. Weird. I forgot the name. You know me. I'm terrible with those. Didn't you send it to us? I did. I sent oh, it to, I sent maybe it to you guys. can bring up the article. Like they all had a deficiency in something or were unhealthy in a different direction. Yeah. So yeah. like, so what they, what they're, what, what the study was showing or what it was revealing was that, and I, I wish I, you know, again, we'll share, we'll share it in the show notes so you can actually read it. But it was showing that the, everyone who, who showed symptoms of, you know, quote unquote, long COVID also had something else that the, the the research is showing that that is what contributed to Oh, that. here we go. Okay, so earlier studies, I'm going to read it. I just found it. Earlier studies had already hinted at this as the majority of long COVID cases occur in those with pre-existing access to psychi- psychiatric disorders. So what the study says, the study found that there was no evidence of long-term COVID infection in patients who were six or more weeks removed from the onset of symptoms, even if those patients reported that they were experiencing long COVID. Further, the study found that individuals who reported having long COVID were disproportionately women and individuals with a history of anxiety disorders. So it could be, it could be that you're, you have an anxiety disorder, you're in the middle of a pandemic, you're bombarded by media telling (coughs) you, oh my God, everybody's scared, you're going to die, whatever. Then you get it. And so then the lingering effects are psychiatric, not uh, from the virus itself. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's kind of messed up, though, if you're that person and the doctor's like, it's in your head, Karen. <laughs> you're, just, <laughs> yeah. you're just anxious. Well, at that, it doesn't matter at that point, Karen, right? Really. If you believe it, 
That's right? true. Right? That's I mean, true. I mean, if you if you believe it's true, then it is true in that sense, right? Wow. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. Hey, did you guys watch um who watched Doctor Strange in here? The, yeah. You know, what's that? What'd you think yeah. of it? <laughs> <laughs> Which one of you guys? <laughs> Take a guess. <laughs> what you, Look, what'd like, you what'd you think about it? Uh you know, it was I thought it was entertaining. It was good, but like it was it was kind of weird. Some of the subject matter was pretty dark. Like, yeah. Yeah, it just got into like like crazy witchcraft and, and uh oh really satanic shit i thought really? it was i thought it was good but you know the, the it goes so it crazy weird, into the multiverse twisted weird like there's different worlds and stuff like that that part's kind of interesting i heard a mixed i've heard a mixed review it's, i've heard people loved it but then i've also heard people say it sucked i like so. the first one a lot like, yeah that was my favorite uh um, i agree th this one was like yeah it, and i think it's just inevitable when you have like the follow-ups they try to like add a whole lot of other layers and it yeah. was just like i mean they, they still kind of pulled it off the worst case um, I can remember in terms of like how it got really got away from them when they add way too many stories going on at once was yep. that one Spider-Man where you had like Venom, then you had the Sandman guy, uh, yeah. then you had like like Hobgoblin or whatever. It had like way too many like side stories going all on at once and then the whole movie just sucks. Yeah. You know, you know what's interesting about the Marvel Universe now is that all of them that they're showing happen after Thanos made half the universe explode and with his fingers and they all came back. Yeah. And it kind of makes me sad. It, it, it makes it kind of well, less, it to me less why, uh, powerful. Remember you know? the, okay. Remember the, the big, uh, you know, Avengers film where Thanos at Infinity, the very end, infinity he, war or, yeah, or yeah. end game or whatever. Yeah, he got, he got all the stones. He snapped yeah. his fingers. Half the, the world, half the universe dust. disappeared. Okay. And then they, it was like five years later and they figured out a way to go back in time, apparently, and, and fix it. I don't remember exactly what happened. I can't remember. But they brought back those people. But they came back five years later. So everybody lost five years of time. But apparently, we don't get Iron Man back. Yeah. And that. Yeah. So it's just like, the, I Made don't know. There's just some of those things you're just like, okay, if you bring. So everybody's back now, but not everybody. And it just, there's a disconnect there. Yeah. It made me a little bit sad. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard mixed reviews. On, I haven't watched that one. i heard mixed reviews on that. What I have heard consistently right now is. Everyone's saying that Top Gun is movie of the year. I it's know. kicking ass right now. I Everybody, that. I, I really want to go see it. I, I get to see it one negative comment, and people are saying, best movie ever, I better than Rocky, better no, than best love stuff. Stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> That's this such bullshit. Our generation's love story. Yeah, it's the that, best love story yes. ever made. Oh, my God. Top Gun won an Oscar <laughs> for music. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Because it's the best. Rocky got best film, best director, and something else that was really What happened good. to Eye of the Tiger, though? You know, it fell short. Bro, what do you mean? They still play that at the I'm gym. Play, okay, oh. go to the gym. Okay. Is there a Top Gun music on? No. Here's a fun fact I for love, you. I you know Tigers. that in Karate Kid, uh, that song, she, they're the best around. Yes. And nothing's ever gone. That That's, was supposed to be in Rocky. It was? Yes. But they pulled that to put Hold on a second. Tiger hold on a second. Stand. Hold on a second. Really? Yes. Was that Frank Stallone? Bill Conti. Oh, it was Bill Conti. Yeah. Did you know Frank Stallone? So is Rocky, is Sylvester Stallone's brother? No way. He composed music? He composed music in, I think, Rocky Four or some of the Rockies. Okay. What? So, yeah. So his brother. What a nerdy random fact you have there. Huh? That's awesome. Shut <laughs> that's, that's something you would do. This is my cousin. He's going to be doing the music for the movie. <laughs> He's just been playing on the computer yeah. for like the last five years. I know a guy. He'll be cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah I know a guy. I got, <laughs> a, I got a guy. Anyway. Yeah. Hey, I want to tell you guys about a DM I got. Um, um, which, you know, we get DMs all the time from people who, you know, give us feedback about the programs or we like the show, whatever. Anyway, this woman messages me and she says, hey, um, <coughs> I think it was Matt. I want to say Maps Anabolic. I'm follow I just started following Max Maps Anabolic. I went into a cut. So I dropped my calories from 1,800 to 1,500 calories. And I've been doing this now for five weeks and I'm getting stronger. And her question was, are my calories too high? So, of course, my response is like, dude, that is, you are perfect. Yeah, you're nailing it. Absolutely perfect. But she thought her calories were too high because yeah. her strength is, she's like, I was expecting my strength to go down. And what I told her was, and this was in Twitter, right? So, what I told her going back and forth, I said, if you go in a cut and you know it's a cut, right? Because you know what your maintenance is. So you drop your calories and you're following a program and you're still getting stronger, that means that the workout programming is absolutely perfect for you. Yeah. It doesn't get, like, that's the sweetest spot you can be in when you get leaner is if you don't lose any strength or and it's rare, your strength goes up. If you do that, that's like, you are perfect. Everything's perfect. You're going, you're oh, going yeah. great. Great yeah. place to be. Yeah, you know, speaking of uh, Twitter land, how is that going for you? 
Oh, it's good. It's uh, it's the the most negative side of me that you'll ever see. <laughs> somebody got somebody on there messaged me and they're like, "Why can't you just be more positive?" I'm like, "Dude, ninety nine point nine percent of all the content that we put out is positive." Right. This is where you're I get like, to be. Let me just do this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is where I need to be. Yeah, this is where I need to vent. You let this out. I get yeah. to be angry and just you know talk shit about stuff. So that's that. I don't feel like you're angry. I think I think you're compared to how I you know how I always am. It is. It's just that's that side of me, right? That comes out. Yeah, but do you think that it? it do you, well, mate, I mean, you know yourself better than anybody, right? because there's mobs there. Yeah, like, it just seems like they can, everybody can kind of collectively, like, gang up on people a lot easier in that platform. I mean, I, I like what you do. I mean, I, I'm paying attention. I mean, I think you, you, you set a little trap for people by saying something that's a little controversial or that yeah. you know is going to rile up a yeah. percentage of people. And it causes, you know, of course, it's going to cause some discourse and people that are going to get upset and freaking whatever. But then it also strikes up a lot of good, intelligent debate and conversation. So, yeah. I mean, you know, not everybody can handle that. You know, we're, we live in this weird time where everybody wants. Every it's definitely not positive, though. Like, I'm not on there thinking. Well, yeah, you were not in there. You're, we're not there to help help people in fitness. No, that's, that's I mean, I do. Sure. <laughs> I'd say I do do talk about fitness on there, but that's not that's that's like some of it. The other the a lot of it is me. You know, that's where I get to, you know, say shit that is on my mind or I'm annoyed or. And so I'm not thinking to myself, how can I help people? Yeah. <laughs> That's not what I think when I'm on Twitter. I think like, here's what, you know, here's what's going well, on. Those short, like quick witted ones Elon Musk does. I just can't help but Like, it's so funny to me. Yeah. Like, oh, he dude. just nails. You his, know, the most shared. His tweets are so great. The most uh, retweeted he, he has, tweet. He has the highest. Yeah. It was, it was, uh, it was after he was about to like buy. After, sigh. It was the Coca-Cola one. Yeah. yeah. The, after yeah. he bought Twitter, he's like, next I'm going to put the cocaine back in Coca-Cola. Oh, yeah, the yeah. most shared tweet of all time. That's actually, you know, I think that is, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I thought I heard him say that this is what led him yes. down the rabbit hole of figuring out how many fake yep. accounts there are. Because he just kind of did some rough math real quick and thought, okay, if I have the number one shared tweet in the world, right, yeah. record most, and it only had so many. It was like 50,000 or yeah, something? Yeah, I don't or? remember what the, no, yeah. it was more. It was millions, right? Oh, okay. It had millions. But it was nowhere near the percentage you would expect. Yeah, how to, they, from they, the they entire yeah. base. Yeah, it was, like, it was like less than 5%, right? Yeah. He's like, how how am I the, the most shared tweet in Twitter land, you know, and it has it hasn't even broke five percent of the entire yeah. population in there it yeah, doesn't, doesn't make sense yeah it didn't it doesn't make sense and so that i think that was what actually sent him down the rabbit hole of trying to figure out where is it where are they with that right now do you know i they're i, know, I think they're trying to push him to take action because he's like first i want to confirm uh -huh. how many bots and now they're like no you have to buy it and they're they're kind of doing this thing back so and forth. You, yeah so you see he was coming at bill gates for being behind some of the campaigning uh against uh, him and it, this was like what to to short the stock of a uh, Tesla. He shorted the stock of Tesla, yeah. which he said, Bill, mm -hmm. Bill Gates. So he says, "You are super, mo Mr. Pro Climate, like save the Earth, yep. save the climate. I own the number one company in the world that is researching and developing he the most the power move on him, and you're shorting my stock. Did you see what happened to him with the ESG? No, he got pulled. What do you mean? Tesla got pulled." Oh, I saw that. Tesla got pulled. So you remember I brought that up a while back, list? I told you guys about uh, what ESG uh, scoring is? Tell me that's not Which is a crock of shit. Tell it, me that's that not political. Yeah, it's Bro, it. BP is on that list. Yes. Exxon, Exxon is on that list what? and Tesla gets removed. That's Off ridiculous. that top 100 companies that meet the requirements for these are, ESG, what does that stand for? Environmental? Social and something. Uh, Doug, look it up, please. Yeah. ESG, I forget every time. It's, yeah. it's stupid. And, and Tesla got taken down. <laughs> It's a and massive freaking, virtue The big signaling. oil companies are still there. Yeah. Environmental, bullshit. social, and governance. Yeah. yeah. Tell me that's not political, dude. 100%. That's so ridiculous. 100%. <laughs> that's so stupid. I know. The fact that he gets pulled off of that, god damn, dude. Uh, makes me annoyed. Such a joke. Talk about something, you know, some, one other thing that's kind of weird. Um, sometimes I wish scientists would just stop. Uh, but they, through using CRISPR technology, they genetically altered hamsters and made them extremely aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> What was their motivation behind this? So, so random. They made, so, so they made hamsters. They, G, they they modified these hamsters through CRISPR technology, and they were like just fucking wheels. Yeah, like mean, fighting each little, other. Little gremlins. Want to kill each other. I'm like, dude. They're, like They are trying to create gremlins. That's exactly you, what I thought of right away. What are you guys doing? I mean, I think a gremlin, the closest thing to a gremlin to me would be an angry hamster. Yeah. 
right? Hey. Yeah, or that movie Critter. Remember that one? Oh, the, yeah. The horror movie. We got to put a picture. So, yeah, what, what is the point? I mean, just to I see. I think they're just can... trying to learn aggression and genetic, and, and, you know, how genes play a role. But they mm. literally turn them into angry killer hamsters. How funny would it, not funny, how crappy would it be if a couple of these hamsters escaped? <laughs> they just all of a sudden there's like this killer like hamsters the lamest B movie ever. I mean the yeah. more the more talk <laughs> of the killer hamsters. <laughs> the more you hear of this stuff and you you couple that with you know the metaverse and what's going on with that like that. Tell me like player one doesn't seem so realistic to you. Yeah. Like the whole concept of player one to me is just I mean, it was it was really neat when it first came out and like seemed Ahead of its time. Okay, hey, Tommy, go outside. Mom, there's killer hamsters. You got uh, <laughs> COVID-27 yeah. and whatever. I'm going to stay in the yeah. metaverse. Good <laughs> luck there. Yeah, yeah. Where, I'm, it's nice where I'm a unicorn and, and I can yeah. fly. That's yeah, what I'm do. No, no. I so, think you're right. So wild, man. Oh, one more thing. So um, this is actually pretty cool. So my mother-in-law, who really, not really into exercise, she's done it on and off. She's trying to work on her diet. We're talking about supplementation. She works at Whole Foods. And she was trying to implement protein powders, um, but we're getting her to avoid dairy right now. So I sent her Organifi Protein. Loves it. Absolutely loves Organifi Protein. Aren't they- using it regularly. So and great for people who have dairy intolerance. Just digestion. Yeah. Uh, you know, Because we're trying to increase our protein intake because we're trying to drop her carbohydrates. So we have to make up the difference in calories. Plus, it's you know I think it's going to benefit her. And she's getting, she's giving me great feedback. So I've already sent her two jugs uh, of, of Is Organifi. it Organifi in Whole Foods now? I could have sworn. Okay, did you guys see the someone in our thread in our forum? You thread, might be right. Someone in our forum thread last night or the night before. Oh, that'd be cool. A uh, new person asked about uh, what we thought about Athletic Greens, and they were asking basically the forum, like, "What do you guys have? You guys yeah. heard of the Athletic Inferior. Greens?" Inferior. No. And every, well, everybody was. Talking, I mean, Athletic Greens came after us, right? So yeah. they they came after us to advertise. Yeah, I don't know enough about. Yeah, them I don't know about. Them. And I actually, they're, they're great. Team they're team actually team. up there. If you were, to, I would consider them up there with Organifi as far as their quality and their taste. They're, okay. they're actually really good. Okay. The honest, the honest truth is, uh, Organifi is a little bit cheaper, and then they offer way more products, and we have a relationship with them, so that's why we we mm -hmm. blew them off. But a solid product, but more expensive, and I would say, uh, you you know, equally as beneficial or as good as far okay. as with ingredients. But <clears throat> what I saw on the thread and why I'm bringing this up is that a bunch of people were talking about how much more they like Organifi, especially the new Apple Chris. And they said like, it's always on sale at Whole Foods. So, I don't, and I don't hmm. know if it or a, or a grocery store. I thought it was Whole Foods. I'll have to go back to no, the Oh, I did not know That's that. interesting. Do you well, know? I mean, I, I'm not seeing it online. But well, I mean, either way. I've never seen it at she, the store. She, she gets it through me because it's free. Well, now, now you, guys, <laughs> me. you want to go to that thread and well, look, look I, what store. I tell you what, though, what impressed, I didn't know that. what impressed me is if have you ever have you ever had a family member or friend who's never taken protein powders try a protein powder? Very hard to please them because for some reason they equate protein powder to like a milkshake. Yes, like, they, oh, they want is, all tastes. Yes, they don't care about. And she the was rest. like, "Wow, this is not bad. I got the chocolate. This is actually you know not bad." So I was really. Really, because I told her I warned. I'm like, look, it's a protein powder. Yeah, it's not. It's serving a, a function here. Yeah, it's not a milkshake. So uh, understand that. No, she re she responded. She'd been using it regularly. Yeah. Um. So it I'm, is delicious. I'm so I'm really happy. Yeah. Hey, real quick, check this out. We put together a forum on Facebook that's managed and run by Dr. Stephen Cabral and his team. Okay, the, some of the best functional health practitioners you'll find anywhere. It's called MP. Holistic Health. It's on Facebook. It's totally free. So you can go on Facebook, join this group, and ask questions, listen to live conversations. Uh, it's a great community that'll help you find root causes of some of your health issues. And it's incredibly valuable. And for the time being, totally free. Again, it's MP Holistic Health on Facebook. It's a group. Anybody can go in. All right. Here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Dustin from Texas. Dustin, what's up, man? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Um, I've been listening for uh, roughly six months, and uh, definitely just want to you know thank you all first and foremost for all the free content you all put out. It's, it's outstanding. It's really helped me for sure. Thank you. Awesome. Um, yeah. Uh, so just a little background on me is like I've been doing strength training uh, for about two years, 2018 to 2020. Um, not really knowing like how to eat, just kind of going to the gym and doing some like compound lifts that I knew how to do and spending 20 minutes on the elliptical. Um, and I definitely got stronger. Um, but there was for sure a cap because I wasn't following like 
the things I know how to do now and, and whatnot. So sort of fast forward to 2020 uh, and COVID hits and I can't get back in the gym. And we had a Peloton bike in our house. And so I was just kind of riding that five days a week to try to stay in somewhat some kind of shape um, and was just not really liking how my body was looking over time, uh, getting really frustrated with that. And so um, that's kind of when I saw ads pop up for Tonal. Um, so we were really interested in it. Uh, we had a lot of conversations about it because big investment, but um, we got one. Um, and leading up to that, I was dedicated. I decided I was really going to take my strength training seriously. I got, you know, my macros. I had my, my daily burn dialed up. I was, I was ready to go. Um, so I got that about last May. And so I've had it for about a year and my strength gains have been awesome. Like it's, it's undeniably been incredible for, for me personally. Um, and, and how I feel and, um, you know, just my overall health and how I feel about my body and everything. But you guys had a, a discussion recently about um, free weights versus machine training. And I thought it was really interesting um, and wanted to see sort of where you, I fall on this spectrum where, you know, the tech is obviously leaning, leaning towards machines. Um, but I'm wondering if I might be benefiting from like a free weight workout every once in a while. Um, if I incorporated that into my programming, um, you know, the tonal definitely offers a lot, but I'm wondering if I'm not building enough, you know, stability that I could be in the movements that I get, you know, from a dumbbell or, or a different kind of workout. Oh my God. Yes. I, yeah, short answer. Oh my, the short answer is definitely. yes. You do it. You do the occasional free weight workout. It'll be great. Just from the, the novelty alone. Now tonal, it would be comparable to just the cable uh, machine in the gym and of all the machines that you can use in the gym, I find the, the the cable machines to be the most valuable because they're more like free weights than like machines in the sense that they can move in different directions. You can adjust the the angle. You're more free with the resistance. So minus okay. the fact it sucks for lower body. Well, that's that was just going to get there. Like it's hard to get to get sufficient resistance for lower body as you get stronger. You mm -hmm. know when you're trying to. You know, if I'll, I squat with over 300 pounds, I'm not going to do that really well. We have a tonal. we have a tonal. We have a tonal in the gym. We, we don't highlight it or show it, but we have one. And uh, oh, okay. and I think it's cool, really cool for upper body yeah, and a cool. and a cool supplemental tool. Uh, but I think it sucks for lower body, like mm -hmm. really sucks. Um, and it's something that we intermittently would use for upper body and still would get would rather use free weights because of the benefits that you get for for free weights. Uh, are much greater than what you're going to get from cables. That being said, um, that doesn't mean that you can't build a very fit, strong physique using a machine like that. I mean, it just really depends on your goals and how far you want to take this. Uh, you, and you're just you're a little limited if uh, if all we're using is like a tonal machine. Do you have room for like a uh, PRX, a PRX been. rack, which they fold into the wall and a barbell. Would you have room for yeah, that? Yeah, we, we could put that in the garage. If uh -huh. you oh, that's, Dude, that's where if it's you, at. If you got yourself a PRX rack, a barbell, and some... You don't even... You, I mean, you could add dumbbells. Maybe you don't even need them because you have the cables from the tonal. But I would go dumbbells, barbell, and the, and the rack from PRX plus the tonal... Okay. You're good. You basically have the the uh, I mean, you essentially have the the wellness studio that I own for almost two decades, where I train clients, and that's almost all I used was cables, and barbell and dumbbells, that's and you, you can need. do you do almost everything with that. So yeah. yeah, but I mean, look, if somebody said I only use free weights, would I benefit from using cables? Sometimes the answer would be the same. I'd say yes. So right. that that there's there's stuff you'll get from one that you won't necessarily get from the other. So it's a great. Yeah, but that being said, okay, the person who's using the cables is missing out more on yeah. If you had to pick benefits. one or the other, yeah, yeah, then the person who let's say if there's a, there's two different people, one person's limited to nothing but dumbbells, barbells. You have another person that's only limited to cables. The person that's only limited to cables is missing out on more than the yeah. person who is yep. only using dumbbells and, and, and barbells is missing out from the cables. Right, right. But um, but it, if you added the rack, uh, oh, you no, got everything. 100%. You add that PRX right now that you can squat, deadlift, barbell overhead press, bench barbell bench press. I mean, those, those are the big movements that you are missing out on with something like the tonal. 
that right. that in itself uh, added with the tonal would be awesome. I mean, because I yeah. I do think it's a really cool tool. I just uh, you know part of your question was too like where we think tech is going. I, I don't know if if tonal and mirror and those things are going to make it. I think they're I think they're grossly overpriced for what they what they give. It's really expensive. It's a cool toy, and if you got money. Uh, and can afford it. I think it, it will hit a very specific demographic of people that can afford to have a toy like that. But uh, for what you get with a, a, a PRX rack uh, and what the yeah. cost of that. Well, is. here's the thing about tech companies: they always love products that um, you know they can uh, consolidate everything to one place, right? And that, and then they're going to sell you really hard on that as being like the answer to mm -hmm. all your problems. And that's just marketing and that's, you know, what they're trying to do in terms of like efficiency. And um, they're going to always highlight that and hype it up as, you know, the one size fits all because that's how you sell it. But it, in reality, you know, we, we get a lot of benefits from this variety of different methods out there. And so it is a it's a cog in the wheel, but it's actually a smaller cog in the wheel than, uh, you know, the free weights. Yeah. If, if you go to all of our houses, uh, I mean, obviously we've been doing this for a long time. You go to our houses, what are you going to find? A rack, barbell, dumbbells. That's it. And adjustable bench. That's all that's in my garage. That's, that's what you'll see um, in our houses. I don't think... When it comes to strength training, aside from, I don't know, pharmaceutical advancements or genetic, you know, changing, you know, people's genes or anything like that, I don't think we're going to see radical advancements in strength training from an equipment standpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, our bodies evolved to get stronger, to lift objects in the real world, and free weights mimic that far better than machines or cables do. Now, again, I'm not saying they don't have value. I do think they have value. And I don't just use free weights, but um, I don't think anything will be invented that'll be better than 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 free weights if we had to compare head to head. It just just is how our bodies evolved, uh, you know, lifting things. So. It's a cool tool, though. I mean, I love that it has the the variable resistance, so it yeah. can it can emulate like you have chains. Yeah, you follow it can, programs. It can adjust based off of how much effort you put into it. Yeah. Really cool features. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's I'm not cool. knocking it at all. I actually love I love using it, but. Again, it's it's just for a novel stimulus for me. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, now, if, I, go ahead. Um, I was just going to say the favorite thing that I get from it is just like the raw data on myself. Really. Yep. Oh, right. I yeah, too. All the data stuff. Well, that's what it does. You're not going to get that with free weights. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My dumbbell doesn't tell me a damn thing. It's yeah. definitely dumb. <laughs> uh, so no, that's what you. That's if that's what you value, you're going to get that. You get that really well with a tonal. You're not going to get that at all. And I, I really think ways. that's who. The, I think that's who. The, I mean, obviously, tonal as a company wants to target everybody. The reality is, it's not going to appeal to most people. It's going to appeal to the 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 number junkie who loves all the data and the feedback, uh, and the person that can afford something like that. Uh, right. And I think for those people, it's pretty freaking cool. So yeah. I, I think it is a, is a neat thing like that. But for what you can get with the the PRX rack and barbell and so like that, the price that I mean, you would have sp you would have spent half the money, and you don't have to pay a monthly subscription. And the different the amount of uh, uh, variety that you have in just those few pieces of equipment is is greater, and what yeah. you'll get bang for yeah. If bar. you add it to what you have, Dustin, literally you'll have like a, oh, a, hell yeah. a gym set up. Yeah. yeah. Um, and awesome. we have we have a link. Uh, I think it's prxperformance.com forward slash mind pump. And then that'll give you a discount. So that's for people listening right now if they want to take a look. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I appreciate all the help, guys. Thank you, man. Bye Thanks for calling in. Bye. Yeah. The, you know, it's funny. I, I did a, a post today on um, Twitter and I said, it's good to question old wisdom. Is that a post or is it a tweet? Tweet. Okay. You're right. It's a tweet. Get your so I know. I'm old. Come on, Twitter, come on, check come on, here, Twitter guy. Uh, I, I, I did a twat and it says, <laughs> no, uh, is that what you say? say tweet, it. my no, bad. No, not. And it says, sorry, Doug, shaking his head over there. It's, it, and it said, like, it's good to question old wisdom, um, but don't do it blindly because it's like, what's that saying? Like, don't take a fence down unless you know why it's up in the first place. Old strength training wisdom is that free weights tend to be superior. People love to question free weights and love to say this machine is better and that machine is better. Generally speaking, it's just not true. You're just going to get overall better effects uh, for the most part. Of course, I think there's some machines that are better than some. Well, training and exercise is a bit of an weights. anomaly when you think about it like that, right? Because almost everything else, everything from nutritional science to cars to computers and tech like everything continues to evolve and improve and get better and what we have today is better than what we had 20 years ago yeah but to your point here's an area where 
it really hasn't. I mean, barbells and dumbbells have been around for a long time and all these cool machines that have came out that are really neat yeah. and look cool and hit different angles and give you different you know variable resistance and none of it is better. Yeah. yeah. I mean, think about that. What else is like that? What else what it else It adds value, but head to head competition it's not. No, no, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I mean, head to head competition and all those other things I named, cars, computers, yeah. you know, nutrition science, like everything else mm -hmm. is like what we know today or what we have today is better than what we had 40 years ago. But we can't say the same about resistance training. Yeah. yeah. I think again, like to you know, going back to the tonal, I think it was a it's a good bridge in terms of like taking the, your average person that would never work out, like instead of them just jumping on a treadmill, you know, like having that simplified sort of experience yep. to get them introduced to resistance training. I think that's super valuable, but it's really expensive. So if they can figure that out, that's crazy expensive. It's really expensive for your average person. So it's like a big commitment at that point. Right. So, um, yeah, but I think at some point, um, just more of these sort of chum in the water and, and getting people to um, feel like they can now kind of at least take those first baby steps yeah. with something like this is valuable. I'm so curious about, in fact, it's funny that we got a question around tonal because it, they have been on my mind with what's, I mean, yeah, now the pandemic's over, right? We, are I they mean, still seeing that growth? Yeah. I mean, what, what, yeah, the, the subscription on top of that's a lot. Well, I like, I like the Peloton Peloton stock exploded during the pandemic and yeah. just tanked afterwards because yeah. the demand dropped considerably. Yeah, it's, so I wonder if that's the uh, same thing with a I, it's got to be i mean now i know that it was propped up here we are in the middle of uh nba finals and the nba season's coming to an end and they also partnered with lebron james and he's been promoting it stuff like that so it may be propped up by some some great partnerships that they've made but i i, I remember when i talked to brendan about the the stick rate and what they claimed mm -hmm. uh with people that were consistently mm -hmm. using that thing and i just don't I don't see that. I don't see that sticking around for that long. I don't see people paying that much money for something like that. That is also inferior. Maybe you maybe you could convince people to to do that if it was t technically a superior product to a barbell and dumbbell, but because it's not and it's more expensive, eventually and to your point Justin, sure it's a great someone who doesn't know any better and is a tech geek and he goes, oh, this is really cool. And they start using it. But if they really get into it and they do stick around long enough, they're going to find out that it's not. They'll move to freeway. Yeah, yeah they'll move to a. Go to the next step. That's right. They'll go to the next step and they'll progress their training if they want to continue to progress like their physique and they'll move away from it. And they'll then they will, if they have it and they already paid for it, intermittently use it because it's just not the end all be all. Our next caller is Ben from North Carolina. Ben, how's it going, man? How can we help you? Hey, how are you guys doing today? Good. Great. Awesome. Uh, well, I guess I'm going to start by saying kind of what everyone says, which is just thank you for doing what you do. Um, I really, really, so it's, it's awesome to have a podcast like this that's not only so consistent as the way you guys release it, but also just how helpful you guys are with taking people like me on to answer our questions. And it's been really nice to have something that I can just like play on the background. That's like really relaxing and pleasant like that while also being able to learn something that I love that doesn't like wind me up and, you know, stress me out like a lot of other things you could listen to. So I really appreciate that. Oh, thank you. you guys. Thank you, Ben. Nice. Yeah, totally. Um, so I'm just going to read my question as I wrote it to avoid rambling forever. Um, and it's regarding the, I just bought Matt's performance and uh, it's regarding the weight and tempo specifically in phase one. So I'm having a hard time finding a weight that's adequately challenging within that low rep scheme while also being able to maintain that fast explosive tempo that y'all prescribe. So like, for example, with the barbell back squats, it says five sets of three reps, but in order for me to be properly fatigued, fatigued in just three reps, the weight I have to choose is too heavy to do those explosive concentrics. So it's like, I have to go either super light for the appropriate tempo, which leaves a lot of reps in the tank. And I feel like I didn't do enough or go heavier, but with a really slow rep speed. So I'm wondering like, am I missing something or am I just overthinking? Really good the question. Intent. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's okay. So there's explosive plyometric type exercises and then there's explosive heavy uh, type exercises. Well, Phase one is heavy. Heavy, yeah. So the intent is to be explosive, not to move quickly. Does that make sense, Ben? So like at, there's uh, one of the phases is explosive, in which case you want to move quickly. But phase one is heavy. The goal is to lift explosively, but you're not going to move fast because you're using a high load. Yeah. This that, is where a lot of the yelling comes out, right? You, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're trying as hard as you can to move the weight fast, but it's not moving. 
and that's the whole point is the grind uh, in that concentric part of the lift for you to basically generate as much force as possible as you would like you're trying to jump and accelerate out of the hole. This is a really good question too because uh, based off the intent, it, you, you're you not wrong either way, right? So in other words, uh, in this case, because it's in phase one and we want you loading the bar heavy and you're not going to be able to move it very explosively, we want you to, to, to choose a weight that is challenging and you're not probably going to be able to move it the way we, we want you. You're going to try to. Yeah, you're going to try to. But it's not going to move fast. But then if it was our intent to move explosively and this isn't a heavy phase, there's actually nothing wrong with you not feeling fatigued afterwards. This is a mistake that people mm -hmm. make with explosive training sometimes is they think that, oh man, I'm moving such a light weight. I need to go heavier because I don't feel sore. I don't feel t fatigued. Or like you said, you have more rest than tank. That's okay. We're not, we're training speed and explosiveness in that case, right? So if it was a, 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 a lighter phase, that would be the intent. And so it's not like one or the other is necessarily wrong. It's that the way we programmed it in that phase for that program is we do want you loading it and we do want you to attempt to move it explosively knowing that you won't be able to. That doesn't mean that I wouldn't also train you in a fashion where I go, okay, now we're going to move a really lightweight and I do want the bar to move really fast and I do expect you to not feel sore or fatigued afterwards because I don't want you to be fatigued because the goal is to move it fast yeah no very well stated Adam I mean mm -hmm. if 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 you are in a phase I think what phase is it in performance where we do incorporate plyos is it four three three mm -hmm. okay so when you're in phase three and you are doing explosive plyo type movements the goal is to move faster and faster not to move more weight so if you do uh, let's say a weight and you're like oh that's light Next set, I'm going to add weight. Don't. Tr just try to move it faster. In phase one, if you're using a weight and it feels too light, you go heavier. Now, the intent is to move explosively, but you're not going to move fast. It's a it's a heavy strength phase. It's not an, a, a plyo type phase. I hope that makes sense to you. Does that, does, does that make or, sense to you, Ben? Or do we make it worse? Yeah, yeah. So I guess, <laughs> so how does that differ from like what would be in like anabolic, for example, where it's like, um, you know, it's still like three reps is like the general range for like some of those squats or bench presses, but like you're not, you're still trying to push the weight off of you. So is it more of just like you're pretending like you're trying to move it really fast? Yeah. I mean, those? yeah, but it's not really different. It's not that much different, but now, and this is, and think of it this way, like as, as us like educating you while also training you through this, right? Anabolic, we're not really communicating things like that. We just mm -hmm. want you to think about form, slow, controlled. It's a performance mindset. Yeah, now, yeah. now we're shifting you into a performance mindset. And so we're trying to teach intent here. Although it's going to look almost identical to anabolic as mm -hmm. far as how the barbell moves. But now we're trying to shift your way of thinking of, but now you you want to try and do it in explosive, right? So where we're not really communicating that in L anabolic, although for a consumer, this is why this is such a, this is a really good question. Yeah, this is really good. Yeah, we haven't gotten to the yeah the, we haven't had a chance. To it'll, it'll look look a squat and an anabolic and a squat and performance phase one both in phase, they'll look the same. Yeah, uh, performance we're just communicating um, just new things and differently. But psychologically, it's different, right? It is yes. because yeah, you are focusing on what kind of force production you're actually promoting with this because that's going to then translate into like your phase three where you actually do triple extension you do these plyometric explosive jumps what you're doing is now it's free it's like that weights off your back you're using the same amount of force you're going to do when you're when the demand is yep. crazy on your back but now you don't have that and we're trying to prep you to be able to uh you know really maximize that output yeah to the out the outside looking in somebody who's watching me move the way in anabolic performance is not going to be able to tell the difference but i am thinking differently when i'm moving the weight in anabolic and and i'm i'm thinking more of like the eccentric part of the exercise i'm resisting the weight on the way down i'm really working a little bit on range of motion more control, control more control when i'm moving in performance i'm really i'm thinking about bracing my core and when i'm at the bottom of that squat i'm really trying to push yeah. off my heels and drive yeah. through drive out of the but hole because it's, it's heavy, more it's of a fight like, yeah but because it's heavy and the and the other the people outside don't know what's going on in my head. They're gonna look at it and go, "Oh, it's exact same thing." Yeah. But I, I'm already starting to shift the way I think about movement and performance, and so it is different. It is different, and 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 uh, so this is such a good question because I don't think we've had a, an opportunity to really communicate the thought process behind that, and I don't think anyone's asked us uh, this question like this. So, mm -hmm. a really good question. And yes, they will look the same, but you are starting to shift your mind more into a performance base. And that's what we're starting to do with you in phase one. Got it. Yeah, that totally makes sense, especially um, 
what Justin said about contextualizing it, how once you take that weight off and you go lighter, now you have that like explosive mentality, so to speak. So you're able to Bingo. actually perform. That's right. Faster. That's right. But it's okay that the tempo of the axle lifting is not because like I remember when y'all like three or four years ago when y'all did that like week sample where you put up all the first week of everything. Yeah. The guy demoing the exercises was going really fast when he was coming out of it. But like, you know, you had, but you know, three reps can't really you would have so many left over, but that right. what you did that made sense. Perfect. Yeah, Very good cool. question, Ben. Thanks yeah. for calling in. Yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Awesome. That was good. I don't. Yeah, th- I don't is. think we've had. We haven't had so many questions. I know. Uh-huh. Yeah. The, I mean, intention is an important aspect of, of yeah. how you lift. It, just, it really is. Uh, but it's good. I mean, it's true. From the outside, it's not going to look very different. But that's the kind of you know those details of like what we discuss when we look at uh, trying to acquire certain type of attributes and, and skills. And 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 this is a totally different focus than say anabolic. And, and, and the reason there, obviously it's that, it's that performance mindset. Like we're starting to prep you to get into that. And how do we develop that? Our next caller is Jessica from Toronto. Hey Jessica, how can we help you? Hey guys, I'm a longtime listener. Really love the content you put out. So thanks for taking the time to answer my question. I'm going to try to keep this concise, but I also want you to have enough context. So for a little bit of background, um, clearly female, 29 years old, 140-ish pounds, about 5'3". Um, I have been, you know, working out for quite a few years now, I'd say at least five fairly seriously. Um, never really on a consistent program. Um, I'm fairly certain I have been over-exercising and under-eating. Um, So for a little bit of context on the nutrition side, I do track on and off. I've gone through stints where I've tracked for like months and months, times when I haven't. When I do track, I'm around, you know, the 1200 to 1400 calorie range. Um, And then in terms of exercise, I'm usually doing about anywhere from, you know, 12,000 to 16,000 plus steps a day. Um, Any mix of cycling, HIIT, strength training, all running, a whole bunch of, um, things, you name it, usually working out multiple times a day. So um, my where I'm at now is that, you know, doing all of this stuff, I feel like I'm putting in tons of effort and just not seeing any changes in my body composition, in weight, anything like that. So um, my question really comes down to, is there a way for me to sort of start fresh? Because, um, you know, doing a lot of, edu- um, you know, listening to your content and research, I understand a lot more now, but I feel like I have just probably crashed my metabolism, not crashed it, but it's definitely down regulated. And so my question really is like, is there a way to, to start over in a sense? Um, because I know I'm at where I, where I am now because of the lack of consistency. And so, especially on the nutrition side, I'm not really sure where to go from here. Like, is it possible for me to even be in a deficit? Do I jump right to maintenance? I don't even know what my maintenance would be right now. Um, and then on the training side, I actually just purchased and just started uh, Maps Aesthetic. So I'm curious if you think it, that's a good program to start with. Yeah. Your assumption is right. Um, yes is the answer. And we probably would start you on anabolic instead of aesthetic yeah, first. Yeah, of course you got aesthetic. Yeah. That's the high volume version yeah. of, uh, of Maps. You can get your way there, but where you're currently at is... Uh, we would want to put, and by the way, Doug, when's the episode go live that we just did about the starting the macros and everything like that? When does that go live? Is that, uh, oh, yeah, I think on Sunday. So, so on, it'll air the day before, the, or a couple of days before this one does. Oh, so it'll air before this. Okay. So yes. we, you're, you're, you're going to get an app before this one actually goes live. They're going to get an episode that actually talks, we take you step by step through like what this would look like, finding out what your maintenance calorie is, how to start to uh, add calories and build your metabolism up. So I think that's perfect yeah. for you. Um, to listen to, so we can go into like really good detail, and then anabolic is where I would actually have yeah. you train. You're 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 in a position now where your body is uh, it's become very efficient, and it's probably concerned mainly with just treading water and healing from all of the the, the workouts that you're doing. And so this is why your body's not progressing. It's why it seems to be frozen in place, and maybe even going backwards a little bit. At some point, you'll start to get some negative hormonal effects as the stress begins to overcome your body's ability. To deal with it. How long have you been listening to the show, Jessica? Um, lately, I've been doing a, like a lot of it, like a deep dive rabbit hole, but it's been on and off for probably the last two, three years. Do you, you, do you trust us? Yes. Okay. Ready for this? I want yeah. you to go into bulk and I want you to do MAPS anabolic. Okay. Now, okay. the reason why I'm asking you to trust us, because I know that just based off what you're telling me, 
going on a bulk can be really hard for you because you're, you're going to yeah. be afraid of gaining weight. And, oh, my God, I'm going to cut my volume way down. Ah, what's going to happen to me? But I would follow MAPS Anabolic. You could do the three days of foundational workouts. So you don't have to do the two. You could do the three. And I would take your – if you're eating twelve to 1,500 calories now – 16 to 18. Yeah, I would go 16 to 1800 calories yeah. mm -hmm. and, okay. and stick with that for a few weeks. Once everything settles, you feel good, then bump it up another hundred to 200 calories and then repeat the cycle. And what should happen is you should start to see yourself build some muscle. And then with that additional muscle, you'll see a speed up in your metabolism. Once you get your calories up to 23, 2400 calories and you're feeling good and you're eating a lot and everything's going great and your strength is good. Then you can reverse out and start the cut, and then your fat, the body fat, will come off your body. It'll just, it'll just come off because you're gonna be working with your body and not against it. But you need to go into bulk. And you need I, to go into maintenance. I would I'm just add a maintenance and into a bulk. Sort of I would, I would abandon the scale in the mirror for a little while too. I mean, it's, oh yeah, that'll mess with it, your head. Really, just focus on getting stronger. If you are increasing the calories as low, I mean, we're only bumping a couple hundred calories, so you're gonna be fine. You're not gonna put on a ton of weight from that for sure. So. But I would abandon the uh, the scale. I wouldn't be focused on how I look. I would be completely focused on your strength in the gym. Performance. Yep. How much? How much? Okay. It, and I mean, follow anabolic to a T, just the way it's laid out. Uh, any activity outside of that, walking. Okay. So no no treadmill. No hit. No hit. No sprints. No doing anything crazy like that right now. If you if you need to move. Just I'm get not, strong. Go for Allow a walk. Your body to build itself. Yeah. That's it. Totally. But that's it. Start with that. And aesthetic right. is too much volume. Which, okay. Got yeah. it. Yeah. So um, we're sending you anabolic. And then, uh, Doug, can you also throw her in the – you have Facebook? Jessica, do you, are you on Facebook? I do. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to throw you in the forum, too, so we can keep an eye on you. Awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah. It's just a great time of year to think about bulking, right? So that's, that's the mind <laughs> you know what, part of it too. You know, okay, Jessica, you know what might end it's up happening? A you might actually get leaner. You might yeah. get, you might, you might get, you actually might start to look like you have more definition. Don't look at the scale though, because if you gain a few pounds of muscle and lose one pound of fat, you'll be positive two pounds on the scale, but you'll look leaner. So forget the scale. But I, I bet if you do what we say uh, and you trust it, Within three, four, five weeks, you'll get comments like, "Huh, you look like you're getting leaner. Like, what's going on?" So, you know, you got to work with your body. Right now, you're working against it. You're like fighting your body, and if you keep so going in that, like yeah, if you and, and you'll lose. You'll if lose you that do battle. a good job of targeting your protein intake, so focus on that with your nutrition and eating whole foods and slightly increasing the calories, just a few hundred, like we're saying, and following anabolic. I actually suspect you will see your physique actually improve in the direction that you want it to improve right out the gates, even with us All telling right. you to go on a bulk. So if you do it that way. Now, if you are inconsistent with a diet and you like throwing in drinking days and eating out a lot and stuff like that intermittently throughout us trying to do this, well, the process might be a little bit slower uh, on rebuilding that metabolism and getting you where we need to be. But if you actually stick to whole foods, uh, increase those calories, make good choices as far as protein intake, and then follow the program, I suspect you'll actually start to even like the way you're shaping yep. up as we're on a bulk. All right. Sounds good. I appreciate it, guys. Hell yeah. Thanks. All Keep right. us posted. Will do. Thank you so much. You know what I like about these questions? is that they know the answer. They just want <laughs> some information, yeah. you know? Because she's like, I feel like I'm over eating, under eating and over training. It's like, well, you are. You're, you're yeah. well, what do you think the percentage is of people that hear that advice actually take it? I think if they talk to us personally, it's a higher, it's a, it's, Probably a majority, not a hundred percent. But I think a, I think a lot of people do exactly what I probably do because we were you and I are on the other opposite of the end of the spectrum, yep. right? And I think they get, and I remember this, and I remember hearing it, and I remember thinking it, and what ends up happening, and the hardest part is sticking to it, because mm -hmm. what will happen a lot of times is someone will hear that they trust us, they're like, okay, these guys know what they're, they're doing talking like about. A week or two. Exactly, they'll do a couple mm -hmm. weeks. And they'll something they'll see something they'll get spooked that will that will fuck with them psychologically and then they'll revert back. That's yeah. what would happen to me all the time yeah. when I would yeah. when I would start to reduce calories to potentially lean out so I would t t potentially look better. It would also pull all the carbohydrates out of my muscles, so I would have this kind of flat kind of look, which you all know have experienced if you've been in a cut before. And it would look to me like, oh my god, I lost like five or ten and pounds tiny. of muscle. Yeah. 
And I'm like, I fuck this. And I would abandon it. And then I'd go back. And so the opposite is normally true when you're telling someone to bulk. She, of course, is going to increase calories, which means she's probably going to increase carbohydrates, which would- yeah, she'll it, gain a little bit of water. She's going to hold on to a little bit more water. And so maybe she goes to button a pair of pants up or put a t-shirt on and it's fitted a little different. And it's only been a couple of weeks that she's been listening to us. And then they go, fuck that. I'm already feeling like this is, I'm getting too big. Or, and then they, and they go back. So mm -hmm. I bet you that happens- most of the time, if you've been listening to this long and heard us preach this message, I think you believe us. But then there's then, then you for some reason you always think you're the anomaly. It's like a tipping point. You're yeah. the anomaly. Oh, I'm the one though that yeah. actually still gets fat when that happens. It's like no, it's not the case. Our next caller is Matt from Australia. What's up, Matt? How can we help you? Hey, um, thanks for having me on the show. It's, hope it's cool for you guys to have an Aussie on the show for once. Yeah, we love yeah. we love Aussies. Welcome. Yeah, um, basically, I've seen these videos online, like on Instagram. Um, first was for a seated row. Um, these influencers seem to think that the best way to do a seated row was to kind of lean everything forward so your back's all rounded out as you reach forward and you're like stretching out all of your lat muscles and then rowing back. And then kind of similar, but I guess different is with RDLs as well. I was always taught the safest way to do an RDL is retract your scapula, have that flat back and have that safe spine position. Um, but I've seen some people claiming that it can be better to do it with rounded over shoulders and your arms tucked in by your side. Um, so yeah, I guess it just kind of goes against everything that I've learned as a young personal trainer about like safe spine position. So I was just wondering to know, like, curious to know what you guys think. Like, is there any value to doing exercises like this? And like, is it dangerous? Yeah. So, no, um, good question. It, it, so, so here's the thing. So address each one individually. Cause yeah, different. because, okay. So you're going to get a lot of, um, variations on different exercises communicated by people who have lots of experience who can say, target this part of the muscle more if you change your elbow position or if you do, you know, like in your case, this row, I know what you're talking about yeah. where they roll the shoulders forward. This gets the scapula to protract and you retract it, but you lean forward a little bit when you do the row. Now it's going to hit the lats more than the upper back. Like what, what they're talking about are variations on exercises that yeah. may have some value. Um, so it depends on what kind of variation is being promoted. Well, let's talk about that one right there by itself. That, that exercise or the seated row, quick example, I train it with a rounded forward scapula where I've let it stretch and retract. I teach it straight back. Yeah. Well, I was just going to, well, cause you got to start there. Yeah. You, you good point. Be able to stabilize properly first and be able to, you know, really get the benefit of that uh, before you move into, it gets a little more advanced once you get into the very much back. so advanced. Yeah. You have to be, you have, you have to, to have really good control. You have to very, have very good control of your scap. Most people don't even, you, I mean, you've been, if you've been a trainer, you've probably experienced this. Have you ever taught someone a seated row and you actually have to fucking put your knee in their back and move their shoulders back for them? Yeah. Have you had to do that? Yeah, so, okay. All right. That's yeah, it. And, so, and, a, and, a, and a, an experienced trainer knows this. So if I, if yeah. I, ha, if I, if I can't even cue a client to, to retract, hold it that way, yeah, to retract their shoulders and I actually need to manually pull it back so they can feel it. I'm certainly not going to teach them an advanced seated row where I'm asking them to protract their shoulder girdle and then retract their shoulder girdle in the same fluid movement yeah. that the, the ability to do that is, is very advanced, but awesome for the points that these guys are telling you. And that's why I love, valuable. that's why I love to do it because I have that kind of control of my scapula. So that's why one I do, but another one I teach. So that addresses that exercise. The the rounded back on the on the with the bar close to or the arms close to your sides. I think that just changes the leverage a little bit, probably allowing more of a stretch. I'd have to try it out. I'm trying to envision it. Uh, you know, here's a good rule of thumb, Matt. Um, all exercises, if they're and any variation of an exercise, any variation, however crazy it looks, if it's performed with good stability, good control. Good mobility. If it's being supported by the muscles and not the joints, mm -hmm. um, then it's a safe exercise. Okay, that doesn't mean it's necessarily valuable because I can. There's a million and one different variations, and a lot of them may not be valuable for the person that I'm training. But they're safe so long as they're done with the way that I just said. Now, some exercises require far more skill in control and stability and mobility, and, and require more strength 
than other versions of uh, those exercises or other varieties. So this is where it can get a little a little bit dicey. Um, and there's easier versions to train and teach than there are yeah. versus other ones like Adam. Well, that's said. why you see them in certifications, all that neutral spine and supported yes. spine type of lifting, because that's how you want to build your foundational base uh, with clients. And then you can move into rounded back type lifting, as, which is very much more advanced and has to have a very good understanding of their body and mechanics to be able to pull that off properly because you do face those types of lifts in the real world. Okay. You're not always going to be in this perfect neutral spine. And this is something that, you know, other camps will, uh, you know, argue and, and say like, well, uh, you know, versus barbell lifts or things of maintaining a neutral spine. But uh, there's a way to do that in, and there's steps to get there. There's prerequisites yeah. to be able to pull that off properly and have that kind of body awareness and understanding where you can control it and provide a, a support. You know what coaches that do this online are the, your your virtual coaches, your coaches that have minimal experience training people in real life, but have trained themselves for 10, 15, 20 years. They're in great shape. Maybe they even competed. They have a great physique. They've trained thousands of people online, but never really in person. They, they give tips like this all the time. It's actually one of the things I love to, to, to address when I see it online. And we have some friends of ours that I, I really I have a lot of respect. They're really smart uh, that are in the space that I, I catch giving tips like this related to exercises that, you know, sometimes they can't get out of their own way because they're thinking about themselves and what they've learned. And it's like, oh, when you protract the shoulders like this, you get a better stretch on the lats and you take it through a fuller range of motion. And they make this big case of why it's better. But it's like, okay, so you've got to. You just excluded eighty five percent. That's of right. Watching that's this. right. You just you just literally just took out 90 percent of my clients because ninety percent of my clients that I trained in real life are people that don't really care about lifting that much that but know they need to be in there that have no clue how to retract their shoulder girdle like, and they they need help like laying down a solid foundation and the the nuances that you are teaching right now are so beyond the majority. It's like, I, I don't even want to waste my time getting in a battle with you on why I don't teach it that way. That's what I see. I see this on, I see this on Instagram all the fucking time to get clicks and to get traffic to use things like this to make a case because what they want to do is we've been, we've been teaching people what you said for a long time, this neutral spine and, and control and then, oh, this is a great way I can. And it's, and it's counter. Yeah, it's so counter. It's like, oh my god, let me. I gotta click on this. This so is the opposite. Bait. Yeah, and then yeah. and then they support it with with science and facts. It, it's right. It is true. You get a fuller range of motion, better connection. Oh, you're gonna get uh, build potentially more muscle. All that is potentially true. But when you're a real personal trainer who trains real people most of the time and average normal people, here's where you have to be able to kind of shift through a lot of the noise online and go like, okay, yeah, sure. That may have some value. But when I think about my clients that I train, how many of them even have the ability to yeah. articulate their spine like that? I know I could tell Sal who can, who's been deadlifting like crazy his whole life. I could, I could tell Sal to do some weird posture with his deadlift and he can do it controlled and safe and with good weight because he has that much control of the deadlift. I couldn't do that with any of my clients though. So you got you, you, as a trainer, you have to keep that in mind when you when you come across content like this that you see online. Is that where you saw this, by the way? I, I'm just assuming. Yeah, yeah, Instagram, and then of course, like my girlfriend comes back and she's like, "No, you taught me I should do it like this. Why is this person saying I can do it like this?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well have, her listen, have her listen. Have her listen to this, is right. so that, and then you can say, "I told you." Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're on the right yeah. track, Matt. You, you, yeah. you're on the right track, Matt. Yeah, I appreciate you calling in. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. No problem. You know, it's uh, um, this reminds me of. I love using this exercise as an example because it looks so wrong. The Jefferson curl. Yeah. If you, if anybody that isn't an experienced coach or trainer, uh, really experienced, saw anybody doing a Jefferson curl, even if they did it right and control them, mm -hmm. they would run over to them and be like, "No, what don't do it." Yeah, but I mean, it, it's and why? Because it's a high skill. You need to have a lot of control. You need to understand end ranges of motion with your spine and how to stop just short of that. So you're just supporting it with muscle. And most people just don't have that stuff. Olympic lifts, phenomenally valuable. Such a high skill though that I never did them with any clients because mm -hmm. the amount of time it would take to teach a client. Well, you yeah. said it perfect already. Yeah. It, it, any any risk, movement, and time span. any movement done controlled and safely could be a good exercise. Yeah. As as ridiculous and as weird as it may look. 
if it has a purpose for that person, and that's why too, I, I'm always, I, I caution trainers who are new and they're learning and like they just figure things out and then they love to criticize people yeah. that they see doing weird, funny shit in the gym. It's like, hey, you don't know what the fuck they do. For all yeah. you know, they can work for the circus. Yeah. And it makes sense why they're balancing on one leg, doing some weird shit like that. Yeah. You don't know what they do for a living, and like, and if they can do it controlled and safely, it has app it has potential application. Right. So, yeah. But I mean, as a coach and a trainer, when you know how many people that you train and the type of person that you train, yep. this is a type of type of stuff. I mean, this kind of reminds me of some of the like our good friend Eugene, who we get into. Which I wonder if that's who he got this from because I have a feeling he did. Uh, you know, the, he gives really cool tips that I like. You know, it's like, yeah. as an experienced coach and trainer who can who can do all this stuff. But when I think about my clients, it's like a lot of this stuff is but not. Who needs the most coaching? Yeah, it's not. Yeah, people that already have a pretty good understanding. Yeah, totally. Look, uh, if you like our show, and I know you do because you're watching, uh, go to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. Tons of free guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at MindPumpAdam, and you can find me on Twitter at MindPumpSal.